Hello from Milano, which is why the design capital of the world I am sitting on a green plastic chair with a red snail as my accompaniment. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about Lisbon, which is where I've just come back from, which is very busy, as all the other weeks have been. Uh, but actually the first day was in London, because it was another promo day for the Harry Potter album. So I was whizzed around London to do various interviews. Um, two highlights, I suppose. One was uh, Women's Hour with Jane Garvey and the uh, Matthew Wright show on talk radio and a few other bits and bobs. And then when I arrived back, we had Web Summit. Web Summit was intense, to say the least. Very, very big event. The biggest conference I've ever been to, I think. As it turned out, 15,000 people in the main arena. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Um, so the first day we got there, yeah, we just did some interviews and um, did the rehearsals for what we were hoping was going to be the song and the like, brief talk at the main stage the day after. but we have never before seen the amount of networking that was underlying the conference space. It is this uh, crazy kind of spaghetti of hidden networks um, that neither Web Summit or we could do anything about. It's just like police, Wi-Fi and all kinds of stuff going on. Hello everyone and thank you so much for inviting me here. What an incredibly large audience you are. But it meant that the gloves couldn't speak to the router and so I couldn't do the glove song. It's a problem in the world, not a glove problem, but uh, it was unsolvable. So I basically stayed awake all night trying to think about what my speech was going to be instead of my song. Today I was supposed to be playing you a song and as a result I spent the whole night panicking about what I was going to do instead. I spent about the hours of kind of five in the morning to eight in the morning, tossing and turning, um, nervous about what I was going to say. And I realized that I've been here before many times um, when I developed technology to basically help me be more human, help me be more creative. And I was just like, why am I doing this to myself? Why can't I just make music? Why do I have to make life so difficult? Um, and then I realized that I've been doing this all my life. Um, from the age of 12, I discovered an Atari computer. And for me, this was a life changer because I made music. You know, I wasn't a Mozart when I was younger. I'm not a Mozart now. But I did love to write music for orchestra. But when you're 12, you're very unlikely to have an orchestra want to play your music. Um, but I discovered with this Atari computer that I could play into the keyboard and I could hear back the sounds. And this really changed my life. And so really, it just comes down to I just can't carry on until, you know, the bit that we're developing gets further, it just puts me in a calmer space or something. So what we're doing around the world, if you have any music maker friends, we are um, doing every week, we have a music maker forum, uh, we do a conference and we do live performances. And on December the 9th, people will be able to download a very basic app, which will put them on the map and begin the journey towards uh, an open database of music makers, a non-profit layer, to hopefully create a flourishing in the music and ecosystem. Thank you for listening, that was a lot to share. I'm sorry I couldn't give you a song, um, but you can always come and see me if you're still in Lisbon on Saturday. Okay, goodbye everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for them to let me have the opportunity to speak there, because it's a big one. So on the Wednesday, that was a jam-packed day. I don't think I've been so tired in such a long time. I had press after press after press after press. It was endless. I had a fireside chat with a lady called Jen Wisner. She's a journalist from Fortune. I had a really great interview with the legend that is Krishnan Guru Murthy. And so that was for Channel 4, which is awesome. That's now online. And then I went home and then I had to prepare because it's Scout's birthday. birthday She's four now and we basically spent the whole night wrapping this ginormous present, um, which is a pass the parcel fancy dress. I highly recommend it. If you have to pull together a kid's party and you don't want to give them a ton of sweets and you don't have that many kids, um, get the adults to get involved and wrap up. We had a space man, we had a dog, we had a penguin, um, we had a load of wigs, um, the Dalmatian, the giraffe, and it was pretty good fun. And we looked all very silly and Scout took some pictures. We had some cake, we had a giraffe cake, and some sparklers and loads of balloons and 
was really, really good fun. So the day after, on Friday, we had the Changemaker Forum, and this was in another British Council offices, so thank you so much to them for hosting us yet again. This one's a really lovely one in Lisbon. It was really good. I was actually a little bit late due to some unforeseen circumstances, so Carlotta took over the first bit of it. Um, and we also had a man there with us who's been actually kind of shadowing me for the whole of this, uh, whole of that week. He's a, a man called John O'Mahony and he's working for a TV company called Block TV where they're focusing on people doing stuff in blockchain. And during that, um, I also did a Skype call into Iceland Airwaves Festival um, with Thomas Golubic, who has a very influential part in, in the success of my career in terms of syncing in TV shows. And he was talking about blockchain in the music industry and how um, discoverability and curation and content getting into TV could be a big part of that, which I agree with. And so that was really good, talking to some of the people also that we'd met at the Changemaker Forum in Iceland, who were also there on the panel. So it was a good kind of looping of events, and uh, it was a good response, nice crowd. Um, I couldn't really see them, but I heard that it went down well. And then on the 10th, uh, the Saturday, we had a family day, and we went to Sintra and it's got this gorgeous castle, um, which is really like a fairy tale. And we went there because obviously Scout likes castles because she's a girl and she's four now. And so we went there and she dressed up as Cinderella. So she was really looking the part and everybody was looking at her going, oh, a real princess, is this your castle? And so we had a really nice time doing that. That was our like family day off. And then the next day was the gig. So this was at a venue that I've been looking forward to a very long time called the Capitolio gorgeous venue. Uh, it's actually an old cinema, I believe. So on the day of the show, it was raining all day long, so we didn't get any shots outside. And in the morning, um, we met up with uh, two VIP enablers who helped us fund this tour in the beginning. Thank you so much to them. Um, we ended up having a nice coffee, and then they came out to the show early and spent the day in the sound check with us seeing all the ups and downs of that. And then, yeah, we did the show. which went great. In fact, we got a standing ovation, not once, but twice. And then that was it for, for Lisbon. And then we had a travel day, and now here we are in Milan. So you're all up to date. So next week, you're going to have an update from Copenhagen about Milan. OK, ciao. And Mike says that this is orange, which I do agree with. It is orange. <laughs>